Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Gustav Allegret of NTN24 and His Excellency Luis Abinader, President of the Dominican Republic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Such a pleasure having you in this great stage. Uh, President Abinader, thank you for your uh, time. Um, I would like to start with a general question, mm -hmm. and later mm -hmm. uh, we will go to, into the specifics. But what are your main uh, policy priorities for the Dominican Republic, um, keeping in mind that the next year is an electoral year in the, in the country? We want to continue all the reforms that we have uh, started uh, since the beginning of our governing in August 2020. Of course, these reforms uh, we have not implemented quite as we planned because we entered in the peak of the pandemic, uh, COVID pandemic. Uh, in those uh, COVID pandemic uh, uh, situation, uh, we handled very well according to the OMS. We being recognized by the o OMS, we were one of the countries who had the lowest lethality, not just in the region, but almost in the world. And at the same time, we were the country, one of, as you know, one of our main industry is tourism. And we were one of the countries that, or one of the countries, not the country that recovered fastest in the world in terms of tourism. And that's why in 2021, we could achieve a 12% growth and a 4.9% last year. As you know, this year, uh, because of the inflation, uh, we had to do some uh, economic policies, especially on the monetary side, uh, to try to lower inflation. We have now the inflation under control. Uh, and then we can uh, do a relaunch for our, our growth, uh, growth uh, uh, try to, to have a bigger growth of the economy. But we have done a lot of the institutional part uh, the country is much better on the corruption, fighting against corruption, uh, transparency, and you see all the indicators that we had a huge uh, advance on that. Uh, we, even in the last two tri trimesters, on the worst of the circumstances, uh, we have lowered uh, to, to record levels uh, the poverty levels. Uh, we had record in, uh, foreign investment in 2022. Uh, $4.1 billion, and this year, I think we're going to break the record of last year. Uh, we established a, a, an insurance for all Dominicans. Uh, we are 98% uh, public health insurance. Uh, I think uh, the, the biggest percentage of insurance in, of all the population in America. Uh, so we have done a lot of uh, advance on, on the economic and business sector and also on the social side. And this combination is what is good for any country. Sometimes you can develop a lot on, on the business part, but you have to also to, uh, to advance on the social issues and the indicator. And I think we have done uh, that uh, for our country. So all these other reforms, we, are, we started the police reform also that is, is going well. Uh, and. And on the business part, uh, we have done a lot of digital transformation also in, in part of, we have a program called Zero Bureaucracy in order to have a more effective government. And we realized the first IPO, we changed the law for the stock market and the security market. We have the first IPO in our government, in the, the history of Dominican Republic just uh, uh, two months ago. So we had a lot of reform, a lot of advance, and that will continue after next year. If you win the election, yes, of if, course. Uh, we, I win the Talking about the economy, uh, Dominican Republic uh, it's um, mostly uh, relying on tourism, and this is the week of climate change in in the United Nations and in in Manhattan, um, if if I can put it that way. Um, where do you stand in the in the fight against uh, climate change? For, yes, our industry, our the, the tourism is very important. It's, it's a basic. Uh, sector for us. But I think the success of Dominican Republic has been the, the matrix, the different uh, uh, areas that uh, are also very important for our economy. For example, the free zones is also the second uh, 
a source of a hard income to the uh, to the DR. We have also the traditional uh, other uh, export uh, as tobacco that we have 1.3 billion in cigar. Uh, we are by far the the biggest exporter of uh, cigars. Uh, we are also very strong in agriculture. So our matrix uh, in in terms of production I, and one of the successful that we have started uh, 30 years ago, uh, I think continues and, and, and continues to grow. In terms of uh, environment, we are very, uh, that, that's I think one of the big challenges that not just Dominican Republic, but all the Iceland in the world, and especially in the Caribbean uh, we have. Last year, I couldn't come to uh, the United Nations Week of New York because we had Hurricane Fiona. Uh, we've, uh, really hit us on the east part of, of the island. And every year we have a, some kind of atmo atmospheric event, either a hurricane or a storm. And every year is, is a stronger and every year is also more difficult to predict. Uh, and, the, and as my friend Mia Motley from Bar Barbados would say, is that we are not causing this uh, uh, problems, but we have been the most affected. And that's why I think this is something we have to work with the international community in order that uh, we can have more protection. Now we have the sargasso, uh, which is a problem, and uh, we have been having several uh, seminars, international seminars on that, uh, to see how we can handle the, the sargasso issue, which is relatively new, you know, from several years, but every year is worse. So I agree with you, uh, Gustav. Uh, it's uh, one of the big challenges that we have on the environment, and that's something we cannot solve alone. That has to be with the community of islands in the Caribbean and with the help also of the richest countries that are the ones who has created uh, more uh, uh, with the, all the in industrialization in, in, the, in the past century and, and more, uh, the problems of climate that we have. Uh, President, um, there are some uh, uh, topics that are related to the news uh, mm -hmm. from the coming days, or from the last day, sorry. Um, we were talking about uh, climate change jointly with uh, poverty is the main causes of uh, migration. And you're dealing with a uh, um, critical situation in Haiti. And recently, uh, you decided to close the border, uh, a measure that has been uh, seen as a kind of extreme uh, to deal with the situation in, in, in Haiti. Uh, how do you justify this decision? No, le first of all, we have uh, more than a century uh, uh, working in peace with the Haitian population uh, and with the Haitian <coughs> people. And the Haitian people and the Dominican people want to, uh, to live and, and to have relations in, in peace. Uh, we have a, a lot of relations starting that 16% of all our a health system is occupied by Haitians. 34% uh, of the uh, maternity beds are occupied by Haitians. And at the same time, uh, it's a very important uh, a, a commercial partner for the country. We don't have a problem with the Haitian government, but the Haitian government, as you know, uh, is, it doesn't have now the authority for all the Haitian territory, and that's why uh, you heard President Biden yesterday saying that Haiti cannot, work, that cannot wait any longer. The situation is a very difficult situation because right now any uh, group or any uh, sector do whatever they want. And then they started doing a canal to a river that from the 55 kilometers that it roams, it just entered two kilometers to Haiti. And in those two kilometers, a, a group apart from the government, with a private, uh, doing a private canal uh, to get water from that river. And we are just saying, we have a treaty that says that any uh, international water that, uh, that is created on one side of the border, it has to be done, any work has to be done uh, together, you know, and with the environmental studies that the river is not gonna, is go not gonna suffer. Because even down the river, there are also uh, Haitians that we have allowed them to take small canals to their production. We have never had problem with this. This is a provocation. They said they are provoking this in order to, to create more instab instability in Haiti. And one of the uh, uh, measures that we have is to close the frontier in order that 
uh, they can realize that they are going to lose more than what they are doing. Uh, we have always been open to the conversations. We are always been open, uh, uh, open to, to speak about how what solution we can do. But they have to be a joint solution, not a unilateral solution to that problem. Uh, talking about Haiti, um, you were here last year and you request some sort of help from international community to deal with the situation in Haiti. Uh, but uh, since then, almost nothing happened. Do you feel that nobody hear your message? But it was not last year. It was two years ago that was, I was here at the United Nations. And the same words that President Biden utilized yesterday, I did two years ago. And now I, I, I can say that, that and the demonstration is what uh, President Biden said yesterday. I think the international community and the United States are hearing this. And I, I really, uh, I am very much in favor uh, with, uh, President, with Kenya. I, I met President Ruto yesterday in order that they have this uh, peaceful uh, uh, and uh, group that is going to organize with Kenya. And I hope that other, other countries, even from the Caribbean, they will also uh, that we have participation of their police in order to pacify Haiti. I mean, what is happening in Haiti, as President Biden said, is, is terrible. Uh, and, and the one that is more affect, has been more affected in, in, in Haiti is the one that cannot get out of Haiti. You know, the very poor people of Haiti are the ones who are suffering. And with this instability, there will not be an investment. There will not be, a, nobody will create jobs. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a humanity problem uh, of the whole world, the region and the whole world. And I think that now uh, with this action, and I hope as, as President Biden asked, that the Security Council uh, can agree uh, to, to the, this peaceful uh, action uh, to Haiti. And I think it's, it's the meeting is on the 29th, and I hope that uh, that, that will be approved. Um why do you think it's, it's taking so long to take this decision? I don't know. I think uh, the, the, there are so many interests and, and also the, the Russian uh, war on Ukraine also took the priorities, mm -hmm. the international priorities. But I, I have been one since, uh, since you said two years ago that in every forum, in every event, in every international organization has been is saying that uh, the international uh, community has to go after Haiti and help Haiti. Yeah. Uh, talking about the internal situation in the Dominican Republic, you are one of the best uh, considered uh, presidents among their citizens in Latin America. I think the first one is Bukele in El Salvador, and there's Manuel López Obrador in, in Mexico, and maybe uh, you are the third. Among the fifth, you, the, the first uh, best rated are, are your name. Um, next year, there's going to be elections in, in Dominican Republic, and the opposition agree in a, some sort of alliance, opposition alliance to your, uh, to your candidacy. Are you afraid of um, do your second term because of this alliance? No, I think that is good for democracy. And if uh, it's normal. If they think they are in a minor minority, it's, it's normal. And it's good for the democracy that they, they can unify. And what uh, the good thing is that uh, we have a very independent electoral court uh, that is, is working properly to have a, a very a clean uh, election. And whoever wins is good for the democracy. We hope that we will be very clearly uh, that we will win on, on the first round. And according to all the polls, that's what it says. But the unity of the position and all this agreement, that is good for democracy. And, and I think uh, that uh, the results will, will be more, uh, uh, will reflect more, and, and the opposition will do better if they unify than how, how they are doing at, at this moment. So uh, one of the good things of the Dominican Republic is that we have a consolidated democracy that will not change, uh, and uh, we will continue uh, to work so that our election uh, will be a model not just for, for America, but for the whole world. Would you like to uh, see a third term if you win this, no, this one? No, impossible, because the, the Constitution does not allow. But apart from that, I was even, my model of Constitution is that in our countries, 
is not, I think the best constitution is that one that can allow two turns, but not in, in an immediate uh, uh, relation. So we have the constitution that uh, doesn't allow any other uh, term, and I think have to be kept like that. And at the same time, in our party and in our country, there are a lot of other uh, young uh, men and women that are as or more capable than, and, uh, than I am uh, to, to handle the situation in the country and, and to do a good government. Yeah. I, I was asking that because in the past, uh, other presidents, recent presidents, changed the constitution and in that, order to that, get re-elected. Yes, but, but I think uh, that has not been a, a, a good sign or a good idea. So it's idea. not a temptation for you? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, My intention is to, to go out and, and, and to live a normal life. And retire in the Dominican Republic, like you. As my family. Uh, let me ask you about Venezuela. Recently you had a meeting with President Nicolas Maduro. Um, and Venezuela is one of the main problems in Latin America and the Dominican Republic. Uh, it's part of the CARICOM and the Caribbean and, and has some sort of influence in the president of Venezuela. Uh, how your government is helping to find a solution to uh, get democracy back to the country? We had the meeting of, uh, the, of the G77, which the, with the Dominican Republic decades ago is part of that uh, group. And uh, that meeting was uh, held in Cuba. And I went uh, to have a speech for a few hours. And I was asked to have that meeting. And I had that meeting. I think what we need is to push for democracy. Uh, I think there is negotiations there to, to have a clean election and to, ha to go into a, a, to have a, a, a deal with the opposition. And everything that uh, you, you, you could help to create a consensus and to have uh, elections that agreed to all parties, I think that we, we, we should be in, and we should help in that way. But did you use your voice to tell Maduro, stop repressing opposition and allow free and uh, He required that elections. meeting. I had that meeting. It was a very, a very brief one. And I was informed that there was this negotiation and I, I certainly said that I am open to help, that, uh, you, uh, that uh, I can do whatever we can do from our side uh, to have a, a clean election and, and that the opposition could participate and, and that they could have an agreement. Let me finish with the role of the United States. You have a very good relation with Washington. Uh, but Washington is seen from uh, many countries in Latin America as uh, interventionist. And uh, some people don't like to be too close to the United States because of the history, recent events uh, in recent decades. Uh, what is the role of the US, United States in America, in Latin America, in your, in your perspective? We have an excellent relation uh, uh, historically, and now in our government, uh, I think with a much deeper one, uh, they have been uh, very uh, active in helping us fighting corruption and working in transparency. We have been also uh, extremely effective in, in uh, attacking the drug trade. Uh, we had excellent results in our government, and they have also praised uh, for that. So I think the United States is, is our biggest partner. It has to continue to do, so, to do that, uh, uh, to be so. And we have to, we have to work to have more investment. The near shoring, I think they should push more that more companies uh, can establish in, in, in the Dominican Republic to create jobs and also to have better technology and to export to the United States. Uh, for me, it's a, it's a very good relation. I think they, I, I, I even think the contrary. I think that they should, should look more for uh, Latin America and should work, should, they should work more in, in development uh, plans uh, for Latin America, in real development plans and in pragmatic development plans. So I hope to continue that relation with the United States and even strengthen that relation with more investment in our countries. President Abinader, President of the Dominican Republic, thank you for your time. Thank you. For sharing your insights here with us. I was planning how to say Gustavo or Gustavo. So Gustavo is fine. Gustavo. Gustavo is fine.